now I'm recording. Thank you. Uh, so if f is a Morse function, then we strive to rearrange critical points in such a way that if p and p prime are critical points, then, sorry, such that index of p is less than index of p prime, then um, f of p is less than f of p prime. So this is like, an, sometimes it is called an ordered, an ordered Morse function, but you don't have to keep this name in mind, ordered Morse function. And how, did, how were we proceeding? Well, we had this theorem that tells you that if we have two critical points, P prime and P, and index of P prime is greater than index of P and F of P, but F of P is greater than F of P prime, and Xi is a gradient-like vector field, which is more smale, then we can rearrange, which means that we can find the function that is the same as F except for the neighborhood of the stable manifold or unstable manifold of P prime or you can do the same in the opposite way, uh, saying that it's in the neighborhood of the stable manifold of P. And this function does the following picture here. There will be some animation. It lifts the critical point above. Okay, that was the statement of the re rearrangement theorem, but we didn't uh, actually, we didn't finish discussing the condition the more smell condition. So what is the more smell condition? Let me recall you. It is uh, an important condition. More smell is, we have like P, P prime critical point. We consider WS of P, WS, W, u of p prime we have a take a non uh, let me just shift it slightly take a level set c non-critical level set uh, between f of p and f of p prime F inverse of C, and we require that this be transverse. So the transversality means that uh, the recall uh, A is transverse to B and A B submanifold of like M if for any X in A intersected with B, the tangent bundle at the point X to A plus the tangent bundle of points is Tx of m. This is transversality. And of course, this is an extra condition, so we have to uh, argue in some way or another that uh, more smell vector fields exist. Because, well, otherwise we are in a, uh, in a, bad, in a very bad position and uh, there is an important remark, important side remark. So... Uh, Excuse me. Uh, yeah? About transversality, didn't uh, don't we want to have uh, not sum but direct sum of the tangent bundles? No, because uh, if you have two surfaces in R three, then they intersect along the. Thank you for this question because it's uh, a common misunderstanding. So and they intersect. So this is. This is A, this is B, 
this is A intersected to B. So TXA intersected with TXB is essentially what you would expect to be the tangent bundle of X and B, to, to both X and B. So uh, the direct sum is only if the dimensions are complementary. Other than that, this condition tells you essentially, and this is uh, calculus to it honors problem, that transversality means that you can use implicit function theorem to, to prove actually that the intersection of F, A, A and B is a manifold. So this is precisely, if you look at it very carefully, you have two manifolds, you want you intersect them, then this condition is what you use to prove that the intersection is a manifold if you use implicit function theorem. And here is an example that you have A and B, and the intersection is um, a line, this intersection is transverse. Uh, I will tell you in a moment why do we want this intersection to be transverse, but this is two-dimensional, this is two-dimensional, the total sum of dimensions is four, but the ambient space is dimension three, so uh, there is no way you can take a direct sum in here. And why do we insist that this is transversal intersection? Well, we want transversality to be an open dense condition. So transversality is an open dense condition, which means that um, you can perturb uh, A, always move it slightly in such a way that uh, A is uh, transverse to B. And actually, so what does it mean to move slightly? Because this is, if we are going into a bit of details, um, let's, let's make one more important step. Well, what does it mean to move a manifold slightly? Actually, the formal definition of transversality is that you have B submanifold of M and G is an embedding of A to M. And then you say, well, G of A is transverse to B. If, and this condition, you translate this condition. And then what does it mean that it's an open dense condition? It's an open dense condition in the space of all maps from, or all embeddings from A to, uh, to M in this space. And this is an open dense condition. Okay, so that's about formal definition of what does it mean to perturb slightly. But always, uh, in most cases, it's enough to think about it you perturb slightly on. And it's an open condition. Okay, so that was one remark, thanks to, uh, if I hear correctly, Piotr. And then there is a second, uh, a second observation, which is uh, more uh, complex and more much deeper. So we don't discuss it at this, uh, during this lecture, but there is a way of considering manifolds with a group action. For example, you have a manifold with symmetry with Z3 or so on. You can consider, and this is not that absurd, at least it, if your group is finite, it, everything goes through, uh, Morse functions that are symmetric in the sense that, let me write it somewhere in the corner, uh, that f of gx is equal f of x. So like invariant under the group action. And you can consider the an invariant a gradient like vector field. For example, you choose symmetric, you smear it, you make it symmetric along um, uh, on the on the manifold and you define the vector field as a gradient. It's okay. But then you run into troubles when you want to prove uh, the more smale condition. So uh, in equivariant setting, there are obstructions to the more smale condition and they are very subtle. Uh, in a sense, uh, uh, in a sense subtlety, uh, well, there are no direct examples in the literature and uh, Wojciech and I have some vague understanding of 
what is the reason of the lack of transversality. And the reason is that, well, essentially, if you have a map of a small dimensional sphere to higher dimensional sphere, then it has to be homotopic to, to the trivial map. But if you, which is essentially the statement of the rearrangement theorem, because you glue handles, so you glue, if you have an ordered Morse function, you glue handles along spheres that are of higher dimension, higher and higher dimension. So you somehow, if you have some sphere with low index that is attached to a, some sphere of the higher index, you can always homotop it below. So this is like a homotopical or smale-like version of Morse theory, which we don't discuss that much. But in the equivariant setting, you have an equivariant map from a small dimensional sphere to higher dimensional sphere, then it's not that easy to, uh, not always possible to homotop. So there is there are some obstructions for the Morse smale condition in the equivariant setting. So that's like a side remark. Maybe you remember it and uh, in 15 years you will, uh, you will use it for some reasons. Mm, anyway, so this is transversality and transversality is open dense. So what do we want to, how do we want to proceed? We want to consider the, now recall where we are, we try to prove that Morse smell conditions, Morse smell vector field exist. So suppose the simplest case, and I will do the simplest case during the lectures and I will leave you the, uh, harder case for the classes, but it's not that, uh, really not that hard. So you start with a, uh, sorry, the other picture. We have uh, two critical points. And now I don't discuss what are the indices because transversality is about uh, being, about the intersection, about uh, this condition and not about the indices. So, we just want, uh, okay, so and we have the, stable, the unstable manifold of P and the, so this is P and the stable manifold of P prime and we choose a uh, non-critical level set. Uh, and one more question about the more smell condition. I assume that we uh, require this condition for any PP prime. For any pair PP prime of critical points, yes. And if uh, such that their respective stable and stable manifolds intersect at all? Well, if they don't intersect, the transversality holds automatically, yes. So that's the fantastic situation that if for every X, if A and B are disjoint, yes. they are automatically transverse. Yes, you're right. Okay, so that's, okay. So we take the intersection point. So we have like, let me call A to be W U of P intersected with F inverse of C. The B is equal to W S of P prime intersected with F inverse of C. And let me also call, it, uh, call MC to be just F inverse of C. Okay, so suppose suppose um, A is not transverse to B. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to perturb. We know that we can perturb the, the man, perturb A in such a way that uh, A becomes transverse. But perturbing A means that we have to change some, change in some way. So there is F from M to R. And if we are saying about stable and unstable manifolds, we already have uh, implied that C is a gradient like vector field. Yes. So that's something that is behind the scene. Uh, so suppose A is not transverse to B, well, we can perturb, but that means that we have to alter the vector field Xi to somehow uh, comply with this perturbation. So we need some 
extra tool, which is actually uh, one of the problems on the classes, but I will give you a partial solution because it wasn't solved. Mm, there was an update on problems from yesterday. So yesterday I updated the list of problems somehow. Um, okay, so um, there is a theorem which is called an isotopy injection theorem, but it's actually a statement. It doesn't, well, maybe I will say, I will call it a lemma, isotopy injection lemma. Uh, it is due to Milner. Uh, so it's Milner, of course, lectures in age cobordisms. As I told you, this is a book, lectures in age cobordism are, is a book for Morse theory and uh, uh, Morse theory is a book about K-theory and K-theory is a book about something else. So, mm, but uh, for, all, all these books are excellent. So isotope injection lemma and uh, let me say what is the statement. So suppose we have M a manifold F and Xi as usual and AB in R, A less than B, such that does not contain any critical points. So, okay, so this is like a situation that we uh, that we all that we all know quite uh, quite well uh, what does it mean that it doesn't have critical points well it means and this is like uh, the lemma about nothing happens if nothing happens then nothing happens the vector field xi induces an isomorphism phi between MA cross AB and F inverse of AB with MA is equal F inverse of A. Okay, you remember this isomorphism? This is like the time to get uh, each trajectory starting at each point. Uh, I take a point here. I take a trajectory and uh, I assign to it uh, a point that it hits MA in here and the time to get uh, and the time to reach this point from A divided by the time to reach this point from B, like somehow rescaled. Okay, so this is like, and I won't do, I, I would like to do something somehow opposite. Okay, so now it's like recalling and now there will be the statement of the lemma. Assume H from MA to MA is, a, is an isotopy. And for those of you that don't know what an isotopy is, this is like, that is T in zero one, H T, H zero is the identity and H T M A, M A is a diffeomorphism. So this is like a homotopy through diffeomorphism. Okay. But it is uh, used in many settings and many contexts. Uh, you de deserve this, uh, deserve this, uh, this, uh, sorry, this deserves a name. So, okay, so we have like two pieces, one piece and the other piece. Now the statement. I hope I can write it here. Maybe I can't. So maybe what I do is. Uh, I see any smoothness with respect to the uh, variable. Just as we do for homotopy. Uh, yes, it's, or do we uh, 
I mean it's smooth with respect to uh, variable variable t, okay? Which by what I mean that uh, 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 let me just finish this. Mm. Okay, so by this I mean. Uh, you can think of it as H gives a map from M A cross zero one to M A cross zero one, such that the projection to zero one makes this diagram commute. Okay, this is like a, and this and we require this to be smooth. The like the, the diffeomorphism. Okay, so this is like another way of thinking about it. And, oh no, this is too thin. There exists a vector field Xi tilde equal to Uh, xi away from f inverse of a b such that well such that this this vector field the flow of this vector field will induce this isotopy okay so this is like we go from xi tilde Uh, of course, uh, Xi is a gradient-like vector field for um, for F, so let me just say it. Gradient-like for F, such that Xi induces the isotopy. Uh, let me just uh, say it goes from And xi tilde uh, composed with sorry phi tilde composed with phi inverse is h a b to a b. Okay, so. If I have one map phi that induces a diffeomorphism from A to B, then I can always, and I have an isotopy, I can always change this phi by an isotopy by replacing the vector field in this region. So this is like an abstract saying, but you see the flow of xi well, identifies this set with the with this levels and i want to change this flow so let me maybe draw a picture i have a flow that it's not a very we have a flow of xi which is straight and it's straight it goes straight up if uh, phi mm, this is like flow of xi, and we have an isotopy uh, sorry mm. we have an isotopy uh, mm. Mm. that takes this picture um a B to M cross A B. So this is like an isotopy, which means that it's a family of diffeomorphisms that go somehow, but not not precisely straight family. 
And then I say, well, we can alter the vector field Xi in such a way that the, flows of the flow of this vector field looks like this. Okay, so this is like injecting an isotope. You, you can't inject an arbitrary diffeomorphism because that would require a drastic change of functions and this condition that it's not equal to, to uh, mm, not equal to Xi away from F is uh, will be violated. By the way, does anybody know an, a diffeomorphism that is not isotopic to the identity? That cannot be connected to identity by a family of uh, uh, by a family of uh, diffeomorphisms. Mm. Well, and 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 typolo map on mm -hmm. a sphere. Well, yes, that's a one. That's a good. Any other examples? Okay, so there is like, for example, like uh, if a map induces some non-trivial map on homo homology groups, then it is uh, definitely not isotopic to identity. Okay, so for example, uh, for example, uh, you have the chicken map. Uh, which is uh, the chicken? I, I like the chicken that map with this. Um, you have a curve, and then you make a full twist along this along this guy. So the curve that goes here becomes this curve, like full twist along a part of the towers. This is not an isotopy. So I call it a chicken map because that's what you do to a chicken before it becomes a broth. Uh, so, uh, but uh, this is not isotopic to the identity. Um, anyway, we can inject and the the statement hint of hint, hint for the proof. Take psi is equal to d of phi inverse h phi psi, uh, or which notation you prefer? You will prefer the d notation or the star notation for the der derivative? So phi h phi inverse takes f inverse of a b to f inverse of b, a b. So this is like a self diffeomorphism, and we take the derivative of this acting on xi, and that's how we replace xi tilde by xi. And of course. Uh, um, of course, uh, it's uh, it's a homework to check check that <clears throat> this is good. Okay. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, that is on the list. So it, and it's been on the list for quite a while. It's not that I'm lazy to I, uh, that I became lazy today and decided not to do it. It's uh, like an exercise that you should calculate once in your lifetime. Uh, anyway, what do we do? We have, we come back to this picture. Suppose A is not transverse to B. Well, then there is an isotopy of MC that makes A transverse to B. 
okay? Well, but what I mean, there, there, is, there is an isotopy. There is an isotopy, which mean, mean, means that there is a map H. Let's see. H0 is the identity and HT of A is H1 of A is transverse to B, okay? So what do we do? Well, now there is a, an observation that is uh, so trivial that doesn't require any other argument. F, like C is an, a non-critical level set. So below C, slightly below C in a strip below C, there, there is like another level set such that there are no critical points in this region. So we have like a, now instead of a critical level set, we extend it to a critical strip below, below C. So here is the critical strip. Sorry, there is no critical strip, no critical points in there. If there are no critical points, then we can use this isotopy and inject it in here. So what happens? Well, we inject the isotopy in this region. So A, after this isotopy, A becomes H1 of A. Okay, because we have injected the flow, instead of having A from here, will make it H1 of A. Okay, because if I have A in here, then, and I identify my strip with the, uh, with uh, the flow of the, uh, with uh, F inverse of C cross C, the interval C prime C, then this, then A in here is the same as A in here. So now my A after the, in the new flow is changed to H1 of A, but B is preserved because B depends only on what happens above the level set. So B is kept. So we change A, but we preserve B. And this means that we change A in such a way, we can change A in such a way that it becomes transverse to B. Okay. And so this makes P and P prime having a transverse Mm. Uh, transverse uh, intersection at the level uh, set C. And now there is a, you, you may ask a question, which is like a legitimate question. Well, whether transversality depends on the level set. So suppose A is transverse on to B at one level set, is it transverse to B at another level set? And uh, well, this is uh, an exercise to see that it's true. That if they if they intersect, you flow the the intersect. Uh, uh, the flow preserves the flow preserves transversality. If they are transverse at one level set, they will be transverse at any other level set, uh, any other non-critical level set between other critical points. And uh, if they are not transverse, they will be non-transverse for all level sets. Okay, and this is the way we organize the vector field to be to satisfy transversality conditions with respect of to two points and then we have multiply we have uh, more points and this more points is also left on, as an exercise because it's not it's like still a rather technical tool than uh, than a real observation let me just uh, take some water that I forgot, some tea, so that I forgot to continue to, to, to bring earlier. And now we pass to like something uh, different, uh, which is cancellation lemma. And I will try to explain, first explain to you the idea behind cancellation and uh, in many details and then give you like a sketch of proof of Milner's cancellation theorem. Actually the cancellation theorem was due to smile but he used uh, like handles 
and handle calculus. We use vector fields um, because it's, uh, well, to many people it's more rigorous and if you see a formula, it's probably correct. And if you see a handle slides or, or a picture, then a picture can be misleading in higher dimensions. Uh, so, um, and Milner's proof is uh, around 20 pages for which uh, like the key point is uh, easy to understand, but higher, harder, um, um, the situation becomes uh, like the details are, uh, are really hard and um, you know, of, of one technical step, but actually technical. So what is about cancellation? So, Cancellation of critical points is something like this. We have a Morse function f from m to r, and m is zero dimensional. Okay. Sorry, one dimensional. Okay, m looks like this. So there is a function that looks like this. This function is the same uh, away from the purplish uh, uh, to, to the pink, uh, away from the pink part. So cancellation means essentially replacing a pair of critical points, making them disappear. So this is like a pictorial situation, like a, like a picture, or we can see like this, we have a Morse function, and the Morse function is also a function, and You alter the function. You alter the function to simplify it to remove a pair of critical points. So what are the indices? The index here is zero and here is one. Here is zero, here is one. So and these two critical points. So the idea is that you can sometimes cancel critical points of indices mm, equal to mm, uh, diff differing by one. So let me discuss the most important example. F from R to R. If you understand this example, you understand at least part of the cancellation. So F of X is X cube. Is it a Morse function on, on R? Is f of x no no it's not yeah. no it's not a Morse function okay yes because it has a critical point and uh, like the gradient f is just three x squared so the flow of the gradient and I just take the standard metric just not to compli complicate is like this well, here is the critical point all right so it's not. Let me just consider a function uh, as in the proof of density and openness of uh, Morse uh, uh, functions. So let me just uh, consider the uh, linear, a linear perturbation. So x3, maybe I choose f like tx. So the gradient is, or just for, for pictures to, uh, for, comp for nicer picture, let me just put the factor three in here, but it's not necessary. Gradient F is equal to three X squared plus T. So there are now two cases. One, T is greater than zero. Two, T is less than zero. If T is greater than zero, then the flow of T is like this. If t is less than zero, 
then the flow of T is like here. Okay, and we have like two critical points, minus square root of, uh, uh, of the absolute value of T and plus square root of the absolute value of T. Okay, and there is this, this part where the flow goes to the other case. So passing from this picture to that picture and back to this picture and to, through this picture to that picture has a name. And the name is called in a saddle node bifurcation. Okay. So in a sense, what we are trying to perform to do is uh, really trying to do is to construct to understand like saddle node bifurcation. Uh, So where can we where can we do that? Let me just draw a one a picture one dimensional higher. A picture one dimensional higher is f of x is equal x cubed plus y square. So what is this? We have the gradient of f is equal to three x square to y. Here is the face portrait of this vector field. And now ft is equal x cubed plus 3tx plus y square. And we have like the case t greater than zero, t less than zero. <laughs> and Uh, maybe there will be too many trajectories. Okay. The key point is the key point in this picture that you should keep in mind is this part a single trajectory connecting. Two critical points. All right. So let me now make first now state what is the statement of the cancellation theorem, and then theorem. Suppose f m to r is a Morse function. Psi is a gradient like vector field. P, P prime are critical points of F of index H and h prime equal h plus one with uh, xi is a, sorry i forgot to write it down here xi is a gradient uh, a morse smale so xi is supposed to satisfy morse smale condition this is important mm. Then there is uh, suppose f inverse of fp, fp prime, sorry, has no other critical points. This, these are these are like technical conditions. Then there is a condition that I will use a different color to write because this is important. Assume there exists a unique trajectory gamma 
from P to P prime of Xi. So what does it mean? It means that you have a single trajectory connecting P to, to the critical point P prime, as in the picture like this. And now 10, there exists F tilde from M to R Morse having the same critical points as M as F except for P, P prime that are non critical of F tilde. So has actually two less critical points. Chris than F. And we can also add a technical observation, which is sometimes useful. We can choose a neighborhood U of mm, gamma as small as we please, such that Xi is a gradient like vector field for F tilde away from U. Okay, so now there are like technical conditions. We have two critical points, indices differing by one, which is important, uh, H plus one in here. And uh, no other critical points. These other critical points would interfere us with our proof and uh, if it's more smale, then uh, actually it's enough to assume that there are no broken trajectories from P to P prime. It's, uh, it's a technical assumption. But the key assumption is that there is a single trajectory gamma from P to P prime. I will tell you why it's an important and crucial assumption, like, assumption later. And uh, then there exists a Morse function F tilde that has two less critical points than F. And of course, there are some, there is some control on this Morse function, but the, it's not a control that you would expect to be by looking at the Morse condition. So let me come back to this picture here. Okay. So over here, we have a single trajectory from zero critical point to one critical point. But the function, but the function f, f tilde that looks like here, is not changed just in the neighborhood of the zero and one critical point. Okay, you see it? The function, maybe I will increase. The function f, here was the function f, uh, Here is the function f tilde. So the function, so maybe uh, here, and here are, here is this region. The function f is changed in a much dramatical, uh, much, much more drastically than in the uh, in the um, um, proof of the rearrangement theorem. This is a different change. It's not a change near a, near a gradient like vector field. It's a change in, uh, um, it's a change, uh, it's a drastic change in uh, ex, uh, of the function. Actually, the change will always take place The 
change of function f takes place near the union of the unstable manifold of P and the stable manifold of P prime, which can be large. So stable manifold of P of, of the zero critical point is everything in here. So this is a large, um, um, uh, this is a large, uh, a, a large set. It's not a neighborhood of a of curve. Curve. This flow can go out of, go out of the critical point, uh, um, uh, quite far. So this is like a semi-local change of variables, uh, and um, so this is one remark. Another remark is that uh, if we have like a two trajectories, not one but two, then we are screwed. Well, we we cannot cancel. So this is like a non-trivial topology. So this is an example. We have two critical points of neighboring indices. The vector field satisfies the gradient, the more smell condition trivially, but then uh, there are two trajectories you can't cancel. You can find the critical point on the on a circle without. Um, without uh, critical points. Mm. So this is an, an observation. And there is like a, uh, let's make a view, a small view towards for the future. So a window for the future. Sometimes some algebraic divagations uh, or some algebraic considerations, that's more American, will lead us to a conclusion that the signed count of trajectories from P to P prime is equal to one. A signed count means that you have mm, some trajectories like intersection points on, on a manifold, you can assign some plus or minus sign and you see, well, there, there are like three trajectories Two are with positive sign. One one is somehow assigned a negative sign, and then we have like the algebraic number of trajectories equal to one. And then the question is whether we can improve the vector field such in such a way that there is a single trajectory. Uh, and uh, this is uh, we'd like to cancel in this situation. And then, and then there is the deepest part of Morse theory. You can do it if the dimension is large. We can do it if dimension is greater than five. And this leads to proof of Poincaré conjecture in these dimensions. can do it topologically in dimension, like I say, dimension five or dimension, well, it's, uh, what is the dimension where we can do it is in dimension four or here is greater or equal. And this leads to Friedman result, which is like the proof of topological Poincare for conjecture and a huge number of, abstractions in dimension four. And this is like, if you understand more theory, you, well, let's say differently. If you don't understand more theory, you have no chances to understand 
uh, four dimensional topology and uh, differential topology and abstractions in dimensional form mean, mean, means there are situations where you can't do it and where more theory doesn't help you simplifying to simplify manifolds and uh, so this is uh, like a very deep piece of uh, mathematics if you see cancellation and I'm, that why, that's why I emphasize on this trajectory, a uh, single trajectory. If you have a single trajectory, you can do a lot. You can simplify a lot. If you don't have a single trajectory, you uh, you might try to improve on the vector field such that in such a way that it be, that you get a single trajectory, but it's not always possible. If it's possible, you simplify and. But the key point is single trajectory you can cancel. Okay, so let me just start proving this theorem. And I will give you a part of the proof, not the whole proof. So remember, maybe before I start, remember, keep in mind this picture, the saddle mode bifurcation. This picture and that picture. So what do we want? We want to have to get a situation that we have a vector field looking like this near this single curve gamma that goes from one to the other, one to the other and then to impose the more smell condition on, on it. So we say, well, okay, we first start, uh, we first start with the one curve, then we would like to simplify the vector field to get a form of the vector field like in this picture with the parameter t with some parameter t that is negative and then okay we say okay we can uh, we found like a good coordinate system and then we undergo the uh, we undergo the saddle load bifurcation Okay, so the proof will essentially use uh, the mm, modification of the vector gradient like vector field psi. So what is the, and not the, not the function f because gradient like vector field are, as I said, uh, much more flexible. We don't need to take care of metrics. We just say, okay, we have a, we have gradient like vector field. Um, and then the last step, after we have figured out what the vector field is, we will, from the vector field, we will fight for creation of a, a function. But this is like the last, the, the last step that we need. Okay, so what do we want to do? Let me just, so we have like a point P, we have a point P prime. Well, what we have here? We have a neighborhood UP and UP prime such that F X1 square minus X H square plus H plus one plus x and square plus let's say f of p. Here sorry for using till does not primes but if I use primes then it will be much it will look much uh, much worse. Okay so we have like minus minus x h plus one square plus h h plus two square tilde plus h n plus uh, plus h n tilde square plus f of p prime so we have like more coordinates we also have our red curve gamma that flows. Okay, and now we take this. 
if I start, I assume, I assume that UP and uh, UP prime, so this is UP prime and not UP, I'm sorry. Uh, so assume that these two neighborhoods have small boundary. So like they are like spheres in local coordinates. If I take this point and I flow with the vector field Xi, the, well, what, what happens? I go along the, vector, the curve gamma. So I hit this, this, so I hit UP prime. And I intersect it transversely. So that's like one assumption that I intersect, that the gamma intersects it transversely, but it's like easy to achieve and believe. So it means that if I have a neighbor, a vector field that is a point, starting point that is close to, well, maybe uh, an orange critical point in here. So it's in here. If I start going with the flow, I will keep close to my original curve gamma. So this is like, and that means that I will hit because gamma reaches UP prime in finite time, I will also reach the point. So that tells me that there exists a neighborhood of, of this point in UP prime and this point, uh, I think it doesn't deserve a name because it exists only on, only for such that any point from this neighborhood, if I flow it through through gamma, then it hits the next neighborhood. So let me call this open set U P or I'm not that uh, uh, I'm not paying that much that much attention on openness and closedness of UP UP P prime UP prime. I want this boundary. I insist that this boundary belong to the uh, belong to the so, to the uh, to the sum of UP prime UP P prime and UP. But uh, whether it's an open set or closed set, usually I think about it as an open set with like simple boundary. But or the closed set whose uh, closure of its inter interior. Okay. So now what happens? I have coordinates. I have local coordinates in here, which are these coordinates. I have some coordinates in here, which are these coordinates. And of course, my vector field xi in here is minus x1 tilde minus xh plus 1 tilde. A, H, X plus 2 tilde, H, X and tilde, and here is X1 tilde, sorry, uh, minus X1, minus X, H, X, H plus 1, X, N. And now I want, I would like to use the flow to extend coordinates extend coordinates from UP to UP union UPP prime. How do we do this? Well, there are like the very various ways of extending coordinates, but this is like Take a point Z. Suppose Z Suppose it takes time T to go from Z to Z naught in the boundary of P and coordinates of Z naught are, well, let me say it, they are like Y1 up to Yn. So what will be the coordinates of Z? Z 
set coordinates of z to be explicitly e to minus t y1 e to minus t y h e to t y h plus 1 e t y n okay does anybody knows why do i ch choose these coordinates of z what is the reason for behind what is behind this Okay, so if my vector field is like this, and I start at the point y1, yn, then after time t, I will have precisely this. I will be at this point. Is it clear? If I have a vector field that at point x1, xn has these coordinates, I take a starting point y1, yn, I solve, I solve the ODE, after time t, I reach this point. Do you agree? That's clear, yes. I think. That's clear, yes? So what does it mean? If I set these coordinates, z, to be like this, then it means, exactly, that on the whole of UPP prime, the vector field xi is given, has these coordinates. Okay, think about it for a moment. If I choose the coordinates like this, then on the uh, in this in this region, then the vector field xi has this shape in the whole of this region. Do you agree? Well, that's like the, oppo the opposite, the other way around. So uh, instead of uh, um, having a vector field and getting and solving the ODEs, I have a solution of ODE. And this is a solution of ODE. And I said, what is my vector field? So my vector field, if I have a, if this is a solution of the ordinary differential equation, starting at that point, then the ordinary difference, then the differential equation must be uh, given by this vector field. That is, that is, that is precisely what, what we mean. Is that clear? I, I think it is. Okay, I have a solution. Now I have a solution and I say, well, if I have a solution, I know what the vector field is. This is the vector field. All right. So I leave it to you. This is like a, or do you want me to pause for a moment, for one, one, one more minute? It, is, it seems kind of circular to me. I, I don't, because you're saying if we have this vector field, then the solution looks like this. And so if we have this solution, then the vector field is, is that vector field. But... Yeah, that's what I say. You have a solution that is uh, a solution of, a, um, of an ODE that is like, you have Y1 dot is equal to like, P1 of Y1, Yn up to Yn dot is equal to Pn of Y1, Yn. And you know that the solution is Y1 is equal E minus Ty0, Y1 of zero. Sorry, mm, let me just write one more sentence. Y1 of T is equal to E2 minus Ty1 of zero y h of t is equal e to minus t 
y h of zero, y h plus one of t is equal e to t y h plus one of zero and so on, y n of t is equal e to t y n of zero. But then if you know that this is the solution, then you know what is the equation because you differentiate with respect to t. So then this tells you that y one, sorry, that p one is equal minus y one, p p h is equal minus y h, p h plus one is equal y h plus one, up to p n is equal y n. All right. So normally you start with this and you go back to this way. But now you have some p1, pn, which are the coordinates of the vector field psi, but we know what is the solution. The solution, the trajectory is like this. So if the trajectory is like this, then you know that the vector field must be like that, just differentiate it with respect to, with respect to t, or find the unique function p1, functions p1 to pn such that this is the solution. Okay. Can I go fur further? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Okay, one people, one person agrees. So all right. So now let me just copy this picture. So you can think about it for a moment and let me copy this picture because I will need this picture uh, in a moment. And I need to enlarge it. So two sets Two sets of coordinates. One on UP, UPP prime, we have coordinates X1, XN, Xi is minus X1 minus, oh, this is not supposed to happen, uh, Xi is minus x1 minus xh, xh plus one up to xn. Second, on up prime, we have xi1 tilde, x, xn tilde and xi is equal to minus x1 tilde minus xh tilde minus xh plus one tilde x h plus two up to h x a. Okay, so we extend that in a more or less transparent way. The the coordinates from here to coordinates from here using the flow of psi, and we have coordinate system in here. And now we look at what happens in. This strip, which is the boundary of mm, boundary of UP prime intersect with boundary of UPP prime. Okay, let me call it X. Okay, so on X we have two coordinate system. One coordinate system com coming from here and the other coordinate system coming from here. And now is the question. Do these two coordinate system match together? Up to, well, they can't match they can't quite match because we have 
here uh, was, I'm cheating, I'm cheating, 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 and you don't pay attention. That means that it's, oh, you know, I'm not cheating, so you pay attention. Okay, it's fine. Uh, so here I have xh plus one, and here I have minus xh plus one. This is like my uh, lack of preparation uh, that I should put uh, x h plus one, not, uh, I put this key coordinate in the middle. I shouldn't have done that. Sorry about that. Mm. So it is, so they don't actually overlap because uh, we have x8 plus one and here we have x8 minus plus one, but it's, and, but it's something that you expect because the um, trajectory gamma hits, uh, um, that the trajectory gamma is, uh, uh, has xh plus, uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, the coordinate x8 plus one is somehow the coordinate in a, in a sense, it's a coordinate along, along gamma. So that's we, how we think about it. So this is exiting, so it's positive, but here is this one is incoming, so it's negative. All right, so maybe we can choose coordinates, like sl make a slight change. Then I will slightly abuse the notation such that P prime is zero, zero, one, zero, zero, and one is at the position HA plus one, shift this coordinate. Uh, this should be negative, so it should be x, h, Uh, this should be like this. Mm. Wait a second, second, one second, one second, please. I'm sorry. Uh, let's put it like like some function v tilde. Of x tilde, which is uh, mm, mm, uh, so if these two coordinates, these sets of coordinates, there are two possibilities either they overlap or they don't overlap. So they, they are the same coordinate system on. Here, except for x8, a, x n plus one, which we slide under the rank for the moment, it's not it's not that important. Uh, so either we either these two coordinate systems overlap or not. So if they overlap, we are in a better situation. If they don't overlap, well, then there is an isotope. Then they we claim, and that's a claim of. Uh, the claim of Milner and Milner proves it in, in 12 pages uh, in, of detailed elaborations that if the coordinate systems don't overlap, so let me just write it down, if the coordinates systems don't overlap, then there exists an isotopy such that after injecting this isotopy, to Xi, in the sense that I dis discussed in the, at 8.30, uh, 
today. So uh, injecting this isotopy to Xi, uh, this um, the coordinate systems overlap. And this is like Milner, chapter five, 12 pages proof. And one remark, this proof uses Morse mail condition. So uh, if the coordinate systems overlap, then the Morse homework, if the coordinate system overlap, then the Morse mail condition is satisfied. That's what you can do. It's not that hard. Uh, so I and I will not give the proof of Miller. Okay, so this is like a technical fight with uh, like uh, a nice that a map that preserves uh, two spaces, two subspaces, two linear subspaces, which are whose derivative preserves uh, two subspaces can be isotoped to a map that is uh, mm, mm, that is. Uh, Mm. That is that is linear. So I've been working with uh, Morse theory for like ten years now, and I never needed to use this uh, to use the the way the this uh, as this 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 coordinate change this coordinate change is made. I only refer to that. So this is uh, I I think it's not that important. What is important is that if you choose a overlapping vector field then you have coordinate systems Xi. Well, if they overlap, you can just combine them. So you have such that Xi is minus X1 minus XH, some function V of XH plus one, XH plus two, XN, and V of zero is zero, V of one is zero, V is greater than zero on zero one. So that's what we require. We don't require that it's like it has a special shape. It's we just uh, and V less than zero away from zero one. So we require the function to be like this. V. Okay, so this is like the this is like the step that somehow prepares us to perform the pre 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 prepares us to perform the cancellation and the cancellation will rely on moving this back okay so now the idea is that we just change the vector field in this neighborhood in such a way that we just subtract something from this function v and subtract it to make make v negative again as you would shout on some slogans before elections to some more theoretical countries. Uh, so, uh, make V negative. All right, so that's the, that's the plan. And here is the question. Have we ever used the fact that there is a single trajectory from P to P prime? I said it's very important. During the proof, did we ever use the this assumption? 
or if we did, where? Silence of the students. Uh, unless it's in the uh, 12 page ice toppy thing, I don't remember it. All right. Well, maybe the silence means that you understand, but you're not confident that you understand. We haven't used it yet. So what we are what we are planning to do. So we have this picture. Let me just copy it. And I think I will not finish the proof today. I'm sorry, but maybe it's not that bad. So, so what we do? We choose this coordinate system. Okay. Choose this coordinate system. We will alter the vector field. So as in the picture in here. Uh, what is this? This is like this. Uh, sorry. We change the vector field. We reverse the flow of the river. So we change the vector field from here to that. So from going from P to P prime, it will go from P prime to P eventually. So what happens is that if we have another trajectory, gamma prime, if we alter the vector field to go this way from P to P prime, maybe we either create a circular trajectory or we create a trajectory that will stay in the neighborhood of P and P prime forever. Okay, so this is, so we haven't used the assumptions of a single trajectory yet. We use the assumption of more smale for this assertion that I didn't discuss, but now we pass to like a more geometric discussion. We want to alter the vector field, but we want to alter it in such a way that we don't create any circular trajectories. So if we create circular trajectories, then we destroy the function and we make it uh, uh, and well, it will not be a gradient vector field anymore because it will have like circular trajectories or maybe some even nastier behavior, like staying, coming infinitely many times near the critical point P and near the critical point P prime. So this is what we have to, uh, this is what we have to um, um, get rid of. Okay, so I will discuss it next week. Uh, uh, I will try to, I will explain this next week and then I will, we will pass to homological properties. So for the next week, if you forgot or never had uh, what is a homology group or relative homology group, then maybe it's a good moment to remember. I will, if there, if there be a need, I can, I can give a crash course on that, but maybe, maybe most of you remember, because then we will try to ask, to find, to discuss where are, how can we find pairs of critical points that have that cancel at a single that 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 can be cancelled okay so i stop recording